this phenomenon is pretty cool. Tanner Tech. Tanner Tech. Tanner Tech. Tanner Tech. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today I'm going to be talking about ozone, how it's produced, and its different effects on different objects and materials. So let's get started. So ozone is three oxygen atoms all put together, which is O3. Now normal oxygen, the kind that's in the everyday gas, is two oxygen atoms bonded together. So that's O2. So ozone is made of three oxygen atoms. Now how this happens is when something like UV light or an electrical discharge hits an oxygen molecule, then this oxygen molecule breaks apart into two separate oxygen atoms. These two separate oxygen atoms then want to bond to something to form a more stable version of itself. So it does this by bonding to another oxygen molecule. So it bonds to this one and forms ozone or O3. Now what makes ozone so unique and useful is that because it is three oxygen atoms, it is an oxidizer. Now this oxygen molecule wants to get rid of its third oxygen atom, and so it does this by oxidizing different substances, such as metal or most biological compounds. But ozone takes rusting to a whole new level, because it wants to get rid of this oxygen atom so fast that it oxidizes whatever metal it touches way faster than normal oxygen does. The ozone reacts with the cell wall of different bacteria and biological compounds, breaking them apart and killing the bacteria. So ozone is a useful at killing bacteria, and it is also useful at decomposing different odors or any allergens in the air. Now because ozone can oxidize and destroy almost any biological compound, it is also potentially lethal to humans in uh, larger quantities, which is over 50 parts per billion. So if the ozone concentration in the air goes over this, then it's lethal to humans. Now ozone can be created by many of my high voltage projects, such as my Tesla coil. It is created in the corona discharge formed on the top load of the Tesla coil. The corona discharge of this Tesla coil can be seen in this picture. and it is created in a spark gap. Now whenever I run this coil, my room always smells like bleach because it produces a lot of ozone. It is also created in the corona discharge of this power supply. Now these signs of ozone production can also be seen in the smell of the Tesla coil when it's on, but it can also be seen in other cool ways inside the spark gap. First of all, the lid that covers the spark gap has been yellowed. Now this is also partially due to the UV light created by the spark gap, but it is also due to the ozone oxidizing the paper itself. And it's only in the ring of where the lid was on the PVC pipe. The effects of ozone can also be seen on the unusual speed of rusting on the screws in the spark gap. Also, if you look around the piece of PVC pipe, it is all yellowed and it has these thing bits of rust on it. This is all caused because the ozone oxidizes almost everything it touches, including plastics. As you can see, the half of the screw that is outside the PVC pipe and not subjected to concentrations of ozone is normal. But this side of the screw that is inside the piece of pipe and is subjected to extreme concentrations of ozone has been rusted very quickly. Now the effects of ozone can also be seen on these Tesla coil capacitors after opening up a broken one. As you can see upon opening it up there are a bunch of these white cloudy lines down the middle. Now these lines are from ozone so when these two metal plates inside the capacitor are charged, it creates a corona discharge around the pieces of tinfoil. This corona discharge produces ozone, which oxidizes the plastic that this page protector is made of, turning it cloudy.
As always, thank you for watching and please subscribe. The effects of ozone. Ow, I just got shocked.